And so because of that success, um, Andre said to me one day, he said, you know, I have a new female artist coming out. I think you two ladies will click. You're both from Westchester, New York. She's from Yonkers and you're from Mount Vernon. And I want you to meet because I want you to style her. And that wow. was Miss Mary J. Blige. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Okay. Welcome to Love from a Distance, where we turn away from the chaos in the world and focus on the love in our hearts. I'm Tina Lifford, and thank you for joining us today. You know, this week I have been contemplating how we are so used to celebrating celebrities. You know, we cheer our favorite sports stars, singers, actors, and too often we don't give enough credit or any at all to the many people who tirelessly and passionately work every day to help shape our lives for the better. These people deserve our heartfelt appreciation. So as we work to focus on love more, let's remember and celebrate the mothers, fathers, uncles, teachers, community members, and many other everyday people who have paved the way for all of us. You know, Congress Representative John Lewis and Reverend C.T. Vivian, both tireless social justice fighters, died this week. Ded they were dedicated and had dedicated their lives to making our everyday lives better. They, along with so many others, deserve our deep appreciation. So I, I am going to turn to and welcome my sister, Iyama Vincent, who never forgets the ancestors mm -hmm. and those who have gone before us. And Iyama, I'm going to ask you to take, to lead us in taking a moment to acknowledge these pioneers, yeah. these caregivers, these loved ones. Rep Representative John Lewis and Reverend C.T. Vivian. Yeah, yeah, because we, um, you know, our tradition and our custom is that you pray for what they call the new expire so that they find their way into the light. So mm -hmm. we call forth the ancestors in the line of John Lewis and C.T. Vivian. We ask you to meet them at the gate of light. And we lift our hearts and our minds to know that the body is just the envelope. It is a spirit that is eternal. So we give thanks and praise to these two incredible spirits for their time here on the planet. And we surrender them with love and energy and peace and joy to their eternal, eternal living uh, in the universe of life. We thank you for all that you have given. We thank you for all that you have been. And we ask that your soul and your spirit return to its eternal home in the heart and the mind of the creator source, God. And we ask for the strength and the courage to continue to live the legacy that you created on this planet. So we lift you, we release you, we wish you light and love. May you know peace. And because we ask believing, we know it is so, and so it is, and we surrender. We surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. You know, I um, spent some time with Representative Lewis. I called him Baba John. <laughs> when we went to uh, Tyler Perry's, um, when he opened his studio, he was among the many elders there. 
And it's so funny because we were on the plane coming home and he said, um, Madam, Madam Iyamla, that's what he called me, <laughs> Madam Iyamla, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I want to thank you for the things that you are doing to set our people free. And I said, yeah, freedom is costly in today. So we had this whole conversation about freedom. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the ways that he thought we would be free was through voting. Uh, and so, and C.T. Vivian, he was there also. He sat at the table right behind me <laughs> at, the, at Tyler Perry's um, studio opening. So for me, you know, I am committing to dedicate from my birthday, which is September 13th, until mm -hmm. November 8th, every day to ensure that we get out to vote. Yes. If I've got to drive people, yes. if I've got to knock on their doors, because yes. Representative uh, John Lewis said, vote like you've never voted. Okay. So okay. one of the things that we can do in our commitment to those we love um, is carry on their work. And right. so that was his commitment. That was CT, uh, Reverend Vivian's commitment. So I'm going to make sure that we vote like we've never voted. If you're 18 this year, you're going to vote. If you're 88, yeah. you're going to vote. Yeah. If I got to bring you cookies, you're going to vote. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to do everything that I can uh, because that's how we honor our ancestors. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. how we honor those that we love. So voting, it's voting. We got to vote. You know, that, that's, uh, I loved hearing everything that you just said. There's, there's nothing like being able to have uh, memories with icons and people that you respect. So I love that you had the opportunity to chat with him. I have a girlfriend who um, had the same opportunity and she just felt like he was, he was such a kind, committed, and so Oh my God, man, Un you know? unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. I yeah. tell you, I remember when his wife died and he was so devastated, you know, yeah. and it and hurt me to see him hurt. Yeah. Uh, and I remember we talked about that when Oprah had the uh, Legends Ball for the men. He was there, mm -hmm. uh, him, Sidney Poitier. And I, I, just to be surrounded by such, he was a gentle giant because yes. John Lewis yes. was not, you know, he was not your alpha man, so to speak, you know, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was a gentle giant. And, and so was Reverend Vivian. Now, Reverend Vivian had a little more fire than Baba John, but, <laughs> you know, to know that there are Black men on the planet who can do such powerful work in such a quiet, gentle way. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to vote. We're going to yeah. vote. Yeah. I, if I got to come to your house, you're going to vote. Well, you know, I, I, and that would be great for us to, and, I, and I'm sure it must be coming, but uh, I think your idea of being able to literally go pick people up, you know, can't you imagine Iyanla Vanzant or Tina Lifford or any of our friends, you know, actually going and pulling up to someone's house, telling them to get in the car, you know, uh, and- With your mask them, on. You, with, with your, your mask, mask, with your mask on, right? <laughs> with your mask on. Yeah. Um, I, I must tell you that that, that this this uh, year's uh, vote, I, I would even I would even risk you know not having a mess because this is such a critical time and I hope that we'll be I don't think we'll be beyond this and of course we will we will all uh, be cautious but it just speaks to how important this vote is we must get out there and. Uh, I'll be curious to know if there is some register or some list someplace where uh, people who uh, are shut in or who need that ride um, can raise their hands and we figure out a way to get there. Because well, you know, I, um, I think that we're really going to be voting by mail because remember by November, we're going to be in flu season. So we got the corona chewing on the left foot and here come the flu to bite the right toe. Yeah. So I really think we're going to be voting by mail, despite what uh, the occupant of the White House is saying. I think we're going to be, let me do my sexiness. I love that. Oh, my God. 
Uh, I think that's very not, sexy. This is, this is how I'm gonna go get people to come vote. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> come on, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, whatever it is that's that's required, I'm going yeah. to um, I'm going to do it in make, honor make of it, make it. because we will vote within. Will it be 90 days? What's this? July, August, September, October. It'll be just beyond the. Um, the 90 days of their transition and that's when you lift them up and you know you do uh. all the things i'm so sad that we don't know our culture as african people native and well native well Americans, you, you, know. you know i i hear you and and iyana i have to tell you that i'm so I'm happy <laughs> you <just have> <laughs> <laughs> we got a you know, stylist coming on the show. I'm trying to be looking. Well, I, I, I have to tell you that those shoulders do look really lovely. You I know? have lovely shoulders. Yeah, so you should you should leave them out more often. They're beautiful. You I know? tell you, that's how I'm gonna get people to come vote. <laughs> yeah. Let me see who's in the house today. Who we got in the house today? I've got Richmond, California, and Cincinnati, Ohio. Ingrid's in the house. I got uh, San Francisco, Brooklyn, my hometown, the big BK. Charlotte's in the house, and North Carolina, Detroit, Indianapolis, New Orleans. Nola's in the house, Alabama. I would have been in Nola last week had the Essence Music Festival happened. Harlem's in the house. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts is in the house. Pasadena, Long Island. Oh, they all at ATL is here. Bridgeport's here. PA is here. Welcome, everybody. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, as we yeah. all gather. This is, you know, Tina, I... This is such an interesting time that we live in. It you is. Know, it I, really is. It's really exciting to me. You know, I was telling I agree. somebody. I was telling somebody, hey, Kansas, Palm Coast, Aberdeen. I was telling somebody yesterday, they were um, complaining or, you know, about some stuff that was going on. And, you know, it just rolls off my tongue like butter. I said, well, Jupiter is opposing Uranus. <laughs> I said, so. There will be sudden and they went, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. They said, I said there'll be sudden unexpected events, little things that get blown up into big things. Big things. So pe that's what people need to know. You know, like a little thing right now can have a really massive effect because of the opposition between Jupiter and and Uranus and Pluto. Pluto, which is the planet of death, birth, and regeneration, took three of them out of here. You know, Joseph Lowry, and now C.T. Vivian, Reverend Vivian, and, and Baba John. So we just- so when, you, when, you, when you say that little things can get blown up, is, mm -hmm. there, is there some way to uh, have the people um, be mindful or practical or even intentional around little things in their own lives. Yes, well, we have to bring our guests on. Yeah, that's well, that's what happens. Uh, uh, you know, little things right now, little good things can really explain expand. So if you're writing a book, or if you're starting a business, or if you have a little idea, really sit with it, work with it, be with it, because it can really get huge with that Jupiter energy. And also, little things don't turn them into big things. If you have a little squabble with your partner, or your children, or a coworker, if you keep you know, grab, grab, uh, grabbing at it, it's going to blow up into yeah. something big. But here's yeah. the big thing. A little mask on your face. <laughs> a little mask on your face. So I, I think by now uh, we all know that Iyanla wants us all to wear a mask. And I ain't yeah. mad at her for that. I don't walk out of my house without it. But I love that you keep us, you know, on point. Okay, so our first guest today has influenced the fashion and music industry from behind the scenes together. by, get by together. styling some of your all-time favorite artists like Queen of Hip Hop Soul, Mary J. Blige, Queen Latifah, 50 Cent, Missy Elliott, Diplo, uh, Winston, Sean Combs, and the list and beat goes on. For over 25 years, Misa Hilton has been the 
fashion architect, I love that, responsible for laying the blueprint that has immortalized hip hop culture's place and influence in the mainstream fashion industry. Uh, in 2012, she opened the Misa Hilton Fashion Academy. Uh, the vision is to develop an institution that supports grooming the next generation of creatives interested in pursuing a career in fashion. That's beautiful. Yeah. She is, yeah, she is the global partner of uh, MCM Worldwide. <laughs> And she is a mogul and a super mom, Misa. Hey. <laughs> welcome, Hello. welcome, welcome. Oh, I, was, I was trying to get myself all set up since I, <laughs> since I knew you were coming. Wait a minute. Let me just say this to you right now. Because, because when Mary J, because you know I'm a bliger. I'm a blind okay. guy. Okay. Yes. yes. If she's any place within walking, running, bicycling distance, I'm right there. She, she probably thinks I'm a stalker. <laughs> but, uh, when she was here in Washington at the, um, what they call that thing, at the National Harbor, she mm -hmm. was there. Let me tell you something. She had on this jacket with the boots to match. I just wanted to lick them. <laughs> <laughs> That's I call my girl. I called my stylist on the phone. I said, oh, oh no. you got to see what MJB got on. Hey, I'm so glad. Do, do this for me, for those who may not know. What is a stylist? Mm -hmm. What is a stylist? I think we should start there because yes. so many people don't even understand yeah. what a stylist is. They don't does. understand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, Miss Iyanla, before I tell you what a stylist is, I have to tell you both that I'm eternally honored. I'm so full. This introduction had me all in my feelings. If I start crying, I said, the first moment can't be me crying. I said, I'm crying. <laughs> so I just want to thank you so much for mm -hmm. all that you have done, all that you continue to do to be a light in this world. And I look up to both of you. And so today is a special moment for me. So I just have to start with that. Perfect. About your story is yes. that when you're on purpose, yes. divine providence will yes. set you up to be Absolutely. where you're supposed to be Absolutely. when you're supposed to be there. Yes. Absolutely. Unbelievable. So is that how you got hooked up with uh, the only artist in the world that matters to anybody? <laughs> Mary J. Blige. Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, what, so what was what was um really powerful about that moment was we were at a time when fashion was changing and the sound of music was changing, yes, right? right? So um, Sean and I had to convince Andre Harrell, God bless, um, to allow us to put Jodeci, who by the way, as you know, was singing Forever My Lady, Have My Baby, the most beautiful love song, and combat boots and, 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 and denim suits and hoodies and baseball caps to the back because we felt that represented youth culture and who we were. And we wanted to see ourselves reflected, you know, on TV and in the music videos. We didn't necessarily feel that they should have to dress up or not be authentic to who they were as right. young people, you know, just because. So um, after a, a, a lot of back and forth Andre allowed us to move forward with that look and it became a trend and it was yeah. like hot fire and every male artist and group wanted to look like Jodeci I mean yeah. the music was was amazing the look was different it stood out and they became trendsetters and so because of that success um Andre said to me one day he said you know I have a new female artist coming out I think you two ladies will click you're both from westchester new york she's from yonkers and you're from mount vernon and i want you to meet because i want you to style her and that wow. was miss mary j Blige. <laughs> yeah, did you do okay. her for vogue did you do her for her vogue cover um no i did not okay because right. sometimes yeah, you yes, have to yes, 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 okay. yes, yes, yes. We, we all know we've all been there now now the blonde hair Mm -hmm. um, did you have something to do with that? 
Well, no, we both love blonde hair. So she did more of like a honey blonde and yeah. I mm-hmm. always did the platinum, but we both, we have so many similarities. We think the same things. We love the same sense of you style. We have the same sense of style. Yeah, you, you think so? They, you, you do. Oh, you do. You do. Really? Yeah. That's uh-huh. my girl. You know, she's, I, I she's tried, my son's guy. I tried, I tried to look like Mary, but um, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about Miss Hilton's Fashion Academy. That is just oh, so exciting. Exciting to me. Let me tell you something. That makes my academy bring so much joy and happiness to me. That is probably one of the highlights of my life right now. Just being able to give back and to contribute into the lives of, you know, our future creatives. Um, I started, I founded it in 2012 because I said, you know what? I see that my people need some help and I want to... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, they do. You know, you get the <laughs> people that as help like, as in information, <laughs> help as in information <laughs> and knowledge and support <laughs> and, and mentorship. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, to be able to get your foot in these doors yes. and stay there and yeah. excel yeah. and yeah. understand the culture and corporate culture and what it is to be a fashion stylist yeah. for real. Yeah. And, you know, that's important. We don't always have that. And so yeah. I said, I, I've had all this success. I've worked in television and film, uh, I did celebrity fashion styling, editorial, runway, every every area of fashion styling, I have done it. And so I said, you know what, I want to give back in this way. And I want to create a program that will support the next generation of creatives. And that was really important to me because I didn't have that. I yes. had to figure it out. That's I right. had to figure it out. And, and they I will did. not give you the information. And they won't because give you the information. Because there are so few of us. I know. Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, back then, it, it, it used to feel like it could be one of us there if it was one of us there. And so there was, you know, it was tough. But I, I made it through my challenges. I learned, you know, a lot. And I wanted to share that wisdom. And I yes. wanted to be a support, you know, for everyone who's interested. I also know how challenging and difficult it could be to be a creative and not know what can I do with my gift? How yeah. can I how can I take yeah. care of my life, my family? How can I thrive being a creative? Because we're not really taught how. And so that that was my reason. So when somebody comes to your academy, mm-hmm. what are they studying or what are you teaching? Is it yeah. classes? Is it how yes. do you do it? Yeah, so it's classes. We yes, is is all of that. So we have um, a fashion styling program, which is a ten month program. We have a streetwear program, which is a six month program. We're just starting a fashion technology program, which is a five month program, and then we have an intensive intern assistant program as well. So, you know, we're we're giving the information. Um, we're we're also mentoring as we go. We I'm familiar with each student that's in the program, and I really want to keep it that way. As we grow, sometimes it becomes hard to manage, but I know each student. Um, I do an interview process, and I meet them individually as the final step once we accept them in. And, and you know, for me, it's not only about the the education, but it's about the support during and after. Yeah. And so for, what, what, we have, we, no, go ahead. Sorry, yes. sorry. No, and we have an what, alumni what, association. Too. Mm-hmm. What is fashion technology? Oh, so, so fashion technology. Well, as we move into the future and everything is about technology, whether it is, um, uh, you know how you can stay, you ever see how you can stand in front of a mirror and get your measurements like that type of technology. Um, you have the back end on websites and coding for fashion and fashion styling that happens that way. So fashion technology is the future of fashion as it, as it pertains to fashion design and fashion styling. And there's a lot wow. of that, a lot that falls under that, but it's imperative to understand that we are going into the future and that yeah. it's about simplifying things, making things easier for our clients and for the experience as well. Because so I, have a, edge. Yeah, I have a, <laughs> I have an app on my phone where mm-hmm. m- my stylist can dress me. You know, yep. look at this, look at that, put this with this, here's this shoe, here's mm-hmm. this belt, here's this whatever. Because, yeah. you know, that's, that's where we're going. That's where that is we're going. where we're What's going. What's the name yeah. of that app? I, we don't have that app. <laughs> I, well, you didn't have a ring light, so I'm giving up on you. <laughs> 
don't know what century you But I'm a fast with. learner. I'm a fast learner. We're well, you know. into the 21st century, <laughs> Miss Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll okay. You. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, so actually, um, we've got a couple of people in our audience who have questions. And oh, yeah. one of the questions um, is asking who your style icons are. Uh, whose oh, style wow. do you admire? Mm. This is from um, Wendy. Mm -hmm. um, my don't be, don't style... be afraid to say me. You could go ahead. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm feeling those glasses. I need to that, find out where you got those. Beautiful. <laughs> I need those. <laughs> um, my style icons were, growing up, were um, Queen Latifah, MC Light. Salt and Pepper, um, Shaka Khan, Diana Ross, Cher. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I love Cher because Cher was always on the edge and always in play. You know, Bob she was always playing. And yes. Bob Mackey. Yes. Bob Mackey. Yes. Bob yeah. Mackey. If, if somebody wanted to be a stylist, um, mm -hmm. Nisa. Yes. Nisa. My daughter's name is Nisa, N-I-S-A, okay. so I'm trying not mm -hmm. to call you Nisa. <laughs> Who would they need to study? See, I love fashion. I sew, so I always okay. study Eunice Johnson, who started okay. Ebony Fashion Fair. I yes. would look at the thing. But if somebody wanted to study, you know, like I watch Project Runway, and mm -hmm. a lot of times the, the stylists, the designers, they don't know, like, they don't stylist know. history. So mm -hmm. who would they need to study? If the legendary Miss Patty Wilson. Yeah. That's who they should oh, study. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's mm. right. Period. Most people don't even know who <laughs> she is. Yes. That yes. is so. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. true. And what she has done and continues to do still blows my mind. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. people, it's, it's well, well, give, us, give us some insights for those who don't know. What has so, she done? So, Miss, what Miss blows Patty. Your mind? What blows my mind about Miss Patty Wilson is what she's been able to achieve in a space that has kept us out okay. and how she's that has kept us out. And she's been in this fashion space. I would, I want to say probably at least 40 years now. And maybe she's more. probably maybe 50, yeah. you know, yeah. she's been in a very long time and she has, she has cemented a, a place for herself where she continues to create at the highest level. I mean, she's doing uh, Dior runway. She's working with Vogue. She's working with the best photographers around the world every day of her life. She eats, sleeps, and breathes fashion. Yeah. And she and, and and although she's been in this business so long, she's still so fresh and on edge. Um, she's kind. She's she's so supportive, generous. And helpful, generous. and generous, and generous with information. And I and I had the opportunity to work with her a few times. Um, and it was an amazing experience. And she really took me under her wing and and showed me many things and made me feel comfortable within the environment. And it and when we spoke about Vogue, a few a few moments ago and when I got to a certain point in my career sometimes when we would get to um, different publications and um, different uh, you networks. know networks 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 mm -hmm. um, <laughs> another stylist would have to would come in and basically recreate and emulate my work I would not be allowed That's to right. be the stylist there That's right. but again God would have it that I would walk into one of those situations and Miss Patty Wilson would, would be right there to greet. Right. Right. <laughs> and you know what? This is what I would say. It is incumbent upon the artist yes. to insist. Like I, my stylist, I don't have no this. No, you can't yes. tell me. Yes. And mm -hmm. even if the magazine or the network or the show wants to provide the clothes. She has to come in. That's incumbent upon the artist because trust me, they yeah. will cut you off at the knees and they tell will. you you can't bring your makeup artist. Oh, mm -hmm. we have no, 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 no. Yeah. They have yeah. to come. And there mm -hmm. are some incredible black designers. I mean, many people didn't know, like Lafayette 148, uh, 149, yes. which is a huge a label. Their yeah. mm -hmm. designer was a black man. 
And people mm-hmm. don't know that. They're paying all that money for Lafayette 148, but, but they didn't know Edward was behind the scenes. And he came over from Donna Karen. You know, you've got designers mm-hmm. out there like Aniva Aniva, incredible designer, uh, mm-hmm. black designers mm-hmm. who are doing clothes, but we can't get in the door. Stylists like mm-hmm. yourself. Can't get yeah. In the door. So yeah. Up until now, up until now, yeah, up until now, able, things are yeah. changing now. Thank yeah, God. things are definitely are. changing. It's, a, yeah. it's incumbent for us as artists to insist mm-hmm. to no, no, mm-hmm. my makeup artist comes with me. Yeah, because you know what, Oprah's makeup artist goes with her. They don't tell her who mm-hmm. she can bring, and now mm-hmm. Gail and Michelle Obama. Mm-hmm. So it's incumbent upon us if we put our yeah. foot down because once yeah. you, you get into those places. Um, but but that's yeah, part of what you, that's part of of the beauty of your academy is mm-hmm. that you will be able to have these kinds of conversations because until until you know that new artist or that green artist hears someone like uh, Iyanla or like Unisa tell them mm-hmm. that they have the right they have the voice they can ask and demand, at least try. But if you don't even know that you, if you right. haven't had the mentorship that tells you you can do that, mm-hmm. then people are going to just, you know, naturally yeah. kind of want to get along to, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, but so, Misa said something mm-hmm. earlier that's important too, because she works in a team. So mm-hmm. sometimes the A&R person or the marketing person or mm-hmm. the the tour, the tour producer will want to use their people. And those are times when you may have to compromise and cooperate. Yes. But there are, um, you know, there are opportunities that I think that we as artists can expose our, mm-hmm. our people to. And I, I love Miss Patty. Yeah. Please tell her I said hi. Yes, I sure will. And so and you, we've, mm-hmm. we've got someone here who wants to know how it was, this is Rosie, wants to know how it was styling little Kim. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Little Kim, amazing. I mean, amazing. Kim is so courageous and loves to take risks. She knows who she is. She's a little powerhouse at four foot 11. (laughs) Like, she's just this sweet but powerful and bold personality and we made some great moments together and she's definitely a lot of fun and she's a beautiful person inside too so she's good to work with she cares about her people you know and she's she she paved the way she paved the way for for the young ladies doing it today that's beautiful okay so we have the question Whose style do you love these days, men and women? Mm-hmm. Oh, whose style? Do I would I, oh, I would I imagine so that that's celebrity. People. What's yeah? What celebrities yeah. style are you loving? Oh boy, that's I mean, but, that's Iyanla, a hard we can't question. hear you. Oh. We can't hear Iyanla. Okay. Uh, Misa, go ahead while they yeah. figure out what's going on with Iyanla. Okay. It's so hard for someone like that, like me that appreciates style, you know, to like say one person or two or three people. I love great style, you know, everywhere on anyone. Someone walking down the street today could, could have been my style. Okay. Give us a name. Give us a name. (laughs) Give us some, some, somebody, give us a male, you know, who is there a male out there? It turns love, your head. Okay, so so I'll give you some. I love uh, Tiana Taylor. I love, uh, of course, Mary J. Blige. I'm just saying. I just have to say that she's forever, <laughs> and not just because I work with her. Um, I love. Um, I love Chloe and Halle. I love. Uh, I love Future. Future style. Um, Hmm. All right. Okay. Is that enough? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, (laughs) uh, We've got, I want to get in as many questions. Go ahead. I love Andre Day style. Andre Day. Andre Day. Yes. I love Andre Day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. They still can't hear me. Yes. I can hear you now. Yes. We can hear you now. Um, Um, I like Angela Bassett. Uh, But Angela Bassett is. Yes. I mean, when she steps out, she's just. Stepping on it, uh, oh, wait. Courtney all, Washington all over it. Courtney yes. Washington out of Brooklyn, another designer, Mushu. Yes, 
Mashoot, are you familiar with Mashoot who used to have the live models in his store window? They would be live people in his store window. And then the only way you would know they weren't mannequins was every 20 minutes he changed. That does just turn. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Come on. Brenda okay. Weinstein. Just, just Brenda one Weinstein. one more. Mm -hmm. I love Queen Latifah style too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Um, what is the age range for your academy? Someone wants to know. Okay, so you have to be 18 and older, an adult uh, for our adult programs. And we have a summer program that we run where we have eight to 16 year olds. And that's each summer. We do a junior fashion experience. Oh my God. Did you uh, see yeah. the junior project one way? They had those kids on there. Sewing. No, I didn't see that. What? 13, 14 years. Oh my God. There's amazing. a lot of talent out there. And, and it's so oh, important to, to be there at that age when they're young. Yeah. because the opportunities are endless when you can like sort of um, mold and, and mentor someone with that level of creativity, they will really have, you know, a, a, a great, a great future ahead of them in fashion. And, and I say that because I, I feel like, um, again, like I didn't really have that and I still was able to achieve what I achieved, but imagine if I did, oh my goodness, you know? Well, it, it, probably, it may have looked very different. You got yeah. it the way you needed to get exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. In right. order to do yeah. what you yeah. needed right. to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you, right. you, know, you know, you were talking uh, a subject that clearly all three of us could be involved in this conversation for uh, a lot longer. And unfortunately, we have to say goodbye. But would you, yeah. would you do us and our audience the, the, the favor of, um, as you close out, share with them whatever you feel is on your heart to share for the people who have a vision you know, to yes. whether it's to be a stylist or something else, what would you share with them? And whatever you want to do in life, you have to believe in yourself. If God put that, 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 that vision in your heart and in your mind, believe in it, believe in yourself, know that you could do it. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to even know the next step sometimes, but you do have to have faith and belief and trust in the journey, in the experience, to know that every step of the way, help will come out of nowhere. Opportunity yeah, yeah, will yeah. come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. If you keep your, 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 your energy high and, and, and be self-aware and pay attention to the way that you think, and especially the way that you think about what's possible for yourself, and be able yeah. to receive. But know that it's possible. It's possible for you. So believe in yourself. And um, I would like to end with a quote. When Please. you learn, teach, when you get, give. By yeah. Dr. Maya Angel. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> I deep bow to you, Miss Misa. Deep oh, bow. Thank you. When, I, yeah. when I go get when I go get my Emmy, I'm gonna let you style me. Yes, <laughs> I can't wait. Yes. I would love to. <laughs> now is that a promise? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and she keeps them. From what yes, I, know, I know, she, she keeps them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Misa, good. thank you so much yes. for joining us. You actually thank you are for a this light. Moment. You are oh. a light. You have light around you. Uh, it, you're, you're a light. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Tina. The pleasure was mine. Be All mine. You. Thank you so much. And, and give Mary my best, please. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her to invite her to the next party. Listen. Oh, Iyala, wasn't that lovely? You I know, do. I love. I, you know, I, I so so. I uh, I've always watched fashion. What I can't do, I can't design. Yeah. I, I I don't know how to make patterns, but I do so. I used to make all my clothes from necessity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <more>. Um, <laughs> and, and which is why which is why you're a Renaissance woman because you there was a lot of necessity and you met it. You know, yeah, had to. Do um, it. But, but what I loved about Misa's share was, you know, she keeps talking about you don't have to have all of the answers. No, you have to have the yearning, willing heart. And, the and then, huh? And yeah. the vision. Yeah, and, the vision. and yeah, the, the, even if you don't have the full vision, the idea that there's something calling you to have the courage to say yes, or just get curious about that, right? You know, um, yeah, and I, she's, I, 
she's in a field that, you know, and I don't think people really understand. First of all, it's a multi-billion dollar, million dollar field, mm. you know, mm. because- I think you're you right. Know, like the when they, <laughs> yeah, when, when they do like the Oscars and the Emmys and all of those things, those big time designers, they go to the top stylists to get their clothes on the runway. I mean, yeah. you know, those, those artists, they don't have buy those clothes. That's I right. didn't know that for a long time. And every That's time right. I went somewhere, I was buying clothes. But then it gets to the point where the designers want to see this person in their dress right. and that person That's in right. their jewelry. That's and right. they go, they do that through the stylist. That's so right. the stylist connection. And like Miss Patty, she was talking about, let me yeah. tell you something. If Jesus wanted his sandals worn, he would go to Miss Patty. Okay, because she is, <laughs> she the big dog in this uh, league. But you know, like the people that styled like Black Panther, uh, that did Selma, there are a lot of up and coming black stylists now. And Nisa is, is well, she ain't up and coming, she's up now. Yeah. But, but we need to understand that uh, when we're looking at these artists on the runways and on red carpets and stuff like that. That's a place we, we so, have to get our foot in. Yeah. But what's beautiful, Iyanla, and this has happened for the second time into today's episode, is that isn't it lovely that we are here being able to create a conversation that yeah. educates, Expose, you know? Yeah. Expose. Yeah. That's absolutely. a beautiful thing, you know? And she's up there. She's she's one of them. Now if we can get some of the black designers on the runway. Like one of the commitments that I made is I don't walk a runway unless I'm in a black designer's club. That's a I beautiful don't. thing. I mean, not a yeah. runway, a carpet. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I walk yeah, a red yeah. carpet unless I'm in a we've, black We've been club. able to, with uh, Jay Bolin and I, we've done that a number of times. Yeah, and yeah. it always feels so good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm smiling because that was not only uh, a, a lovely... Um, chat with Misa Hilton, uh, but I'm smiling because we have the opportunity now to introduce you to Felicia Fant and um, KJ Rose. Our next two guests have also quietly yet heavily influenced music and art and culture on the global scale. Yeah. Felicia Fant was recently appointed as head of urban music at Columbia Records. She oversees a campaign roster, which includes Lil Nas X, uh, Raphael Sadiq, Farrell, um, uh, Chloe and Hallie and more. She was previously an SVP, that's a Senior Vice President of Media and Strategic Development for Warner Brothers Records, where she envisioned and executed innovative media campaigns and many award-winning multi-platinum artists. Um, KJ Rose, who you may have recently caught actually hosting our uh, Love From A Distance uh, IG Lives, right? Um, she is a Grammy award-winning artist development and performance expert. I so look forward to talking to her about that. Uh, the entertainment industry in insiders know her as the talent whisperer. Uh, as she is instrumental in taking artists' stage presence and overall personas to the next level. Performers like Lil Nas X, Bill, Billy Ray Cyrus, and many more have JK to thank for a large degree for their stage presence. But <laughs> rather than talk about them, let's talk to them. Hello, yeah. Felicia Woo! and KJ. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that intro. That was great. Yes, Thank special. you. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice to have you ladies here. Mm -hmm. oh, it's an honor to be here. Seriously, like two queens. I admire you both. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How are you nice doing, KJ? Back. I am feeling just lifted and just excited for this moment that was supposed to happen before, but Felicia reminded me that God's time is perfect it won't that's it right can never be denied yeah so i'm <laughs> grateful so grateful yes. well, yeah well Iyanla, what you you didn't hear um <laughs> before we came on that when uh we had technical before our audience we had technical difficulties um recording a show with felicia and kj um probably about a month a month and a half ago right yeah. uh and 
And so we were happy to be able to get you ladies back. But Felicia was saying today, and I'm going to let you say it because I thought it was just such an interesting conversation that on the same day that um, you were scheduled the last time, and we thought it was technical difficulties on our mm. side, Felicia had a different way of seeing it. So, okay, so KJ is going to probably beat me up later, but she'll <laughs> um, so she'll forgive me later. But what I was saying is that her grandfather had passed um, the day before. And so I think sometimes you have to take a moment to actually heal yourself. And KJ is a healer of a lot of people. If you need someone to come in and make you feel better, just give you a hug and love you, it's always KJ. So I said, for one moment in time, God and the universe wanted someone to heal her. So I'm saying that, and she's probably going to be mad at me later, but I <laughs> felt like the reason it did not work out that time was because she needed to just sit still. To be still. I believe right now, especially in this pandemic, that we have to figure out how to actually just be still. Um, and I'm learning that too. I'm a person that's always on the go. So it's not just my own lesson, but in that lesson of her actually teaching me so many things, I said, this is the lesson that you teach me coming to you. So that's and, and I received that. I received that, sister, the teachable moment. Thank you. <laughs> well, I want to talk to you because I think both of you uh, represent, again, I'm so grateful for these conversations because when we see artists perform or when we hear about somebody getting a, a new deal, we don't think about the talent develop, you know, the artist mm. development, and we don't think about the head of the label and what goes on. I want to come yeah. to you first, KJ, because okay. I come from, you know, the Motown era where they had yeah. talent, art, the artist development and artist yep. training. Talk to people about what that is. What does that mean, artist development? What does yes. that mean? So my job, number one, a lot of times people get me, they interchange me with vocal coaching. I said, right. vocal coaches, Vocal coaches deal with the instrument. I deal with the behavior. I help you to occupy all of your space so that when you're telling a story that it's compelling. My job is to make you as masterful and as vulnerable as possible when you're telling your story so that you're never asking permission to do it, that you know that you are worthy of actually being on that stage, being in that boardroom, being on the corner, wherever it is that you are, on the corner singing, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Put your Wait shoulders down. Wait Put your shoulders down. <laughs> Or juggling, or juggling, whatever you like. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, um, that you're uninhibited in doing so, and that you know that uh, you are worthy of that space and that you've already been qualified for it. So take, for instance, um, Miss Felicia, who has always been very gracious and generous about sharing her victories and, and new opportunities. So when Lil Nas walked in her office, she immediately called me. This was before the single would even come out or it had just started um, to gain some traction. And she said, we need you. And I just said, yes, because uh, I do believe that God sends me my clients. I do believe that I'm assigned to them. It's never a number to me. It's, it's knowing that I'm assigned to that heart. And she said he's never performed a day in his life on a big stage. And the first performance was going to be his video shoot. Wow. Um, so that is my job. That is my goal. And I, I treasure it. And I'm grateful that God assigned me to this mission. And I'm grateful to have people like Felicia that see me, right? Because yeah. a lot of times yeah. being in the background, um, you do get you know, it's not overlooked because that's, I'm not a, a martyr in any way, but it is, people just don't understand what they need what you until do. you're finished. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And Miss Felicia, can you tell us what does a head of a label do? I, because I've, I've known some, but you know, again, these are things that most people just don't ever get an opportunity to hear. What do, what is your work, your, your, I always call it a purpose, not a job. Because mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. is just over broke. Mm -hmm. As long mm -hmm. as you got a job, you just over broke. So uh, <laughs> but your, your purpose as the head of a label, a black woman, I mean. Woo! <laughs> I'm head of Urban Music at Columbia Records. And I would say, because you said purpose, it's connecting the brand narrative, um, connecting the conversation and making sure that while there's a song out, there's more to that person than just a song. So my job mm -hmm. is to tap into et to each department to make sure there's synergy amongst everything to make sure that this voice, this conversation, this narrative, this brand makes sense. So mm -hmm. whether it's PR, whether it's branding, 
Um, of course, there's all the different functions, video, and bringing in KJs to make sure that we bring the best out of the artist by making sure that we have actually defined what this artist means, what they represent, and how they can actually have a through line through culture. So I would say okay. that is my overall role. I want to put this out to both of you all because I've seen it. I've experienced it on some level, but I want you all mm -hmm. to help me here because I've seen that I won't name the artist, but sometimes mm. an artist, a young artist or a new artist will come out and have a hit song and it goes real, real big. And then I think, I don't know if it's the label or who it is, pushes them to do the next one when the person really isn't prepared for mm. all that comes at them as a result of the fame and the public mm. act. You know what I'm talking about. But that's what yep. you said. And that's the whole thing about preparedness and saying, let's take a step back. Like we have a great song, but to KJ's point, if you've never actually actually held a microphone, if you've actually never been on stage, how do you make that person ready for this big moment? And how do you catch them up to that song? Yeah. And a lot of the time the song will proceed anything they've ever done. They might not have, may, may never have been on a plane before. And I say this because, again, every artist is not monolithic. So I want to make sure I'm clear on this. But there's a lot of artists that we sign that have not ever been on a plane, have never traveled, who have never been on a stage. Right. So it's our job to take a step back and say, you know what? How do we make sure they're ready for this opportunity in this moment so that they can actually embrace it and also have a trajectory that says, I'm going to be here not for one moment, but forever. So it's yeah. our job to take a step in sometimes and say, you know what? Let's take the step back and say, how can I make sure that we give them all the tools to be here for their entire journey, but also be prepared for the journey? Yeah, yeah. And to piggyback on Felicia, um, I oftentimes get artists that don't necessarily know what performance development is and don't really want to be there. It's the label's idea to get them there. And so, I mean, I've had an artist and I said, hey, do you know why you're here? And he was like, no, I don't really rehearse like that. And I'm like, I get you because my job is to meet them where they are. I'm always yes. there to say, I'm not here to force you into anything and I'm not here to change you. My job is to push you beyond your perceived capacity. Whatever you think about yourself, I just want to take you higher. And I say that I'm not there to um, everything you're doing is fine. Like, because you want to disarm artists because it's, this is their personal story and their personal journey. And you never want them to feel that you're coming in and saying something is wrong. And so, you know, my job is to build a toolkit for them to pull from. If you've never done a show and you've got nothing in your wheelhouse, it's impossible for you to envision victory. Okay. And so I need to put enough in there. So by the time you get mm. to every stage, you're like, oh, I've done this before. I've seen an audience that was not engaged. I know right. how to overcome this, right. you know? Yes. So it's, I've, I've got to build that wheelhouse. I've got to build that mental, um, I would say, uh, strength so that they know that they can overcome and that they cannot recycle inspiration. So I need them to keep living and experiencing and getting out on every stage and making sure that they are occupying and that they are never, never, ever asking the audience's permission to be in that space. Let but me, they're penetrating. Exactly. We've, heard, we've heard something like, <laughs> okay, Jen. I mean, it's, it's, it's legendary mm -hmm. for me anyway, mm -hmm. how they say how Clive Davis built Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What, what, wasn't he the head of a label? What, what does that mean? But I think there's two things. I think seeing talent and bringing out talent are very different. And so okay. he saw talent, um, mm -hmm. and I don't want to speak on him because he's one of the best to ever do it. But I think he saw talent, it's about nurturing talent. And I think yep. a lot of people will say, you know what, this artist is here and they give up. Or they're like, oh, here's the song, I'm moving on. Our job is to say, mm -hmm. this person may have came from nothing. How dare we not give them the chance to be their best self and envision a, a vision that we've never seen before for them. So it's yeah. our job to take a step back and say, okay, we see this artist, we believe in them. We're saying we believe in them. So let's give them the tools, like KJ said, to elevate them to their yep. highest potential. So that's the yep. job I think of a true label head is to say, we see you, we understand you and we feel you and we allow you to also take risk, be different and recognize that everything is not gonna be the same. You know, mm -hmm. just because one person puts a song out this year that fits this genre doesn't mean they can't evolve to something else. So our job is to constantly tell you that you can be everything and we're here to support you with whatever vision you have set forth. And I think KJ's role in this whole dichotomy of making sure an artist stays uplifted is to say, let's take these risks. Let's be bold. Let's be very intentional about what we want to yeah. see come out of you. And I think, yeah. again, my role is to say, I see you too, but let me pull all the people together to yeah. make sure that it makes, you, makes sense yep. and yeah. that it can happen. Yeah. 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 I, I can think, I just say? Yeah, go, go ahead. 
Go ahead. I was going to say, I used to work for Clive Davis. I was his assistant. I had several jobs, okay. but wow. I was his assistant and there was no way you could be around him and, uh, and not project and not have a level of courage, you know, because, I, and I learned so much, even from uh, never resting on your past laurels. And so a lot of that yeah. training is what I take in to my clients. I said, whatever you did yesterday, that's over. What you got today? What else you got other yeah. than this song? You know, when people can't sing along, what else do you have? But I think it was uh, a lot of the the traits that I, I witnessed from Mr. Davis and being his, and the humility that it took not to say, I'm saying with the greats. <laughs> but, you know, for me, I was like, for every tea that I pour, for every apple I cut, we gonna have a conversation. So I would always try to engage him on why did you pick this as a single? So, you know, the learning and honoring the space you're in is also yeah. what I take over to my clients as well. Yeah. Alicia, can I ask you a question? And I'm just, I'm, just don't make me cry. Just don't make me cry. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Because I've, I've heard this, and I don't know how true it is, but you know, when we're in these industries, you know, if it's movie, television, entertainment, they say that there's, there can only be one of us at a time. Mm. So there may be four or five great artists out there, but the industry will kind of pick one and push one along. Is that accurate? Is that an accurate assessment? You know what? I has, think has that been an accurate assessment <laughs> in the past? There are moments, and as a woman of color, I have seen certain types of artists develop quicker and get different opportunities. But what I will say, and I will say this because KJ and I came together for this artist called Little Nas X. And what yeah. that means is that culture will tell you what is popping. Culture will tell you what has to happen. Culture mm -hmm. will tell you that you cannot stop it. So as much as these things happen where it's a whole regimented idea of what can make sense, what can be popular, there's always going to be a moment where culture says, you know what, I feel this artist. I feel his energy. Yeah. Everyone, the community decides. So I want to say this. There is something, television, telephone, and teleperson, okay? And the mm -hmm. right person hears about this and it becomes contagious, which Little Nas X was, you can't stop it. His stardom, his personality was undeniable. And so mm -hmm. I do believe what you say, there might be a formula, but when real talent is there, it will always break through. There's nothing that can stop real talent, period. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that's called being backed by God, right? Backed by God. Yep. You know, but then, then we have the history of people um, like, Prince, who said, you know, being with a label is enslavement, and I'm that's mm. when he was the artist formerly known as Prince, and he tattooed himself. So, I mean, there's some I mean, challenges. I was his publicist, I would like to say that. I was his publicist. wow, yeah, okay, <laughs> yes. at the time, and Serena Gallagher. So, I've been in his life for 3121 and for his albums before he passed, and I think mm. it goes back to um, something deeper than just art, because you never stop Prince's art. It's more so about ownership. And right. I think those two things are what we're battling right now. It's, it's the voice versus ownership. And when right. someone has accomplished as much as Prince, when you have seen the world change because of your sound, your voice, your fashion, we can go through everything that Prince has done and the reiterations of who he is. You say, at some point, do you have ownership? And yeah. at what yeah. point can I own myself? Myself. I've done everything to elevate you. So I think those are two very mm. different conversations. Well, that, mm -hmm. that, that's good to make that distinction. I definitely understand that. And it's when you first start out, I mean, when I first started out as an author, I was just so excited that somebody wanted to publish my book. <laughs> I, you know, I, what you want me to do? You want me to wear a bowl on my head? I'll put a bowl <laughs> on my head. You know, 19 books later, I'm like, yo, I, I don't know. Yeah, okay, take it. Take it. <laughs> okay. I'm still trying to write a first paragraph, but I'm <laughs> But I'm Go. just saying, like what you were saying about Prince, there comes a moment when you have to be own your intellectual property. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. you know, 19 books ago, I couldn't. But then there comes that place. And I think that's something that mm. artists have to decide, you know, that first push, they need the label, they need the development, they need that. But then how does the industry respond mm. when you say, wait a minute, let's look mm. at a more equitable deal here. Cadillac Records yeah. was a classic, was mm -hmm. a classic story about that where the artists started to want to own their own stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that as the head of a label, 
um, Miss Felicia. <laughs> Felicia. Felicia. Oh, Felicia, Felicia. Felicia. That you, that you will have, you know, be a little more open to some of those conversations than when we weren't in positions. Right. We're still trying things. to make those positions happen. Trust yeah, me. Right. We're still trying to put ourselves in positions to have these decisions and also take care of the artists that deserve these conversations. So mm. it's a growing path for me. Um, I think it's a growing path for other people, but people don't yeah. hear you. And I think yeah. our job in these roles is to say, you know what? This artist does not look like you. So there's things you might not understand about them. So let me mm. educate you on right. their principles, yeah. right. your yeah. values, right. why you should give them the same opportunities that their white counterpart has. That's what yeah. we have. What's, mm. what's on the horizon? Because I see a lot of international artists. Uh, what's the young brother's name from Nigeria that, you know, that they're coming it's not there, it's not there. Yeah, yeah, and there seems to be this whole fusion, uh, this whole fusion of me music happening. Are you seeing that? Um, I think fusion happens because we're discovering ourselves. You know, I think you grow up being in certain pockets and then you start to understand the diaspora and how that affects you. And what has happened for me as a African-American woman from the South is that you have boundaries, then you recognize there's no boundaries. Actually, yeah. you put yourself in these boxes. Yes. So as you start to broaden your horizons and see more and learn more and travel more, you're like, music is worldly. So what yep. has happened is something like the internet, as we sit on the Zoom and everything else, that we're like, we can now bring things into our life that even if we can't travel and see them and experience them right in that moment, we can actually hear them and look at them and realize, you know what? You look like me, you feel like me. These drums mm -hmm. are me. Everything mm -hmm. about me is centric in my soul. And that is what makes music so important now. And as we continue to expand the diaspora and understand, when I say expand, it's here. When I say enjoy the diaspora and actually see it, we're understanding mm -hmm. that music is for everyone, but we are part of these things. Like this color allows us to be everywhere all the time. We've always been there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're Ooh. realizing now we're owning yeah. our narrative yeah. and the music are yeah. you working with any international artists, KJ? Have you worked with any? Um, I have, um, because I literally just did a workshop in Ireland and um, in Australia, and I worked with a young man in Ghana. Uh, and so just, it, it's, it's the same. It's helping people to um, identify um, their personal narrative so that it can become part of the story that elevates them. Um, no matter what stage they're on. And so I always say that whether I am in Ireland or whether I'm here in Chicago, my job is to shock systems, agitate areas that people did not know existed about themselves or may have just been lying dormant. Because yeah. once you kind of um, understand that there are layers of vulnerability that will get you closer to being able to tell your story so explicitly where it cannot be hijacked, there's no stage you can't get on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You can't. No, you can't. <laughs> okay, so so I have to tell you that we've got we've got people in Questions our audience who up. really yeah who really <laughs> want to get their question asked. So uh, Felicia um, says here you do a lot of giving back uh, to your alma mater. I do. I so love shout out. Yeah. So can girl? you tell us something okay. about that and and why it's so important to you? Well, a couple of years ago, we started the Entertainment Summit for students who didn't quite understand how to get into the entertainment business. I think that when you grow up, there's always jobs that are okay. It's okay to be a lawyer. It's okay to be a doctor. It's okay to be a teacher. But what if I want to take that turn? How do I enter this? And I think when you come from a liberal college, especially when in the South, you're not sure how to get there. So a lot of us came back and said, you know what? Every homecoming, we are going to start panels and discussions and figure out how to create internships and a pipeline for these young women who have not ever seen this opportunity who want to be in yes. entertainment. So that is mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the ways that I give back outside of making sure they're getting a check every month for my check, for my <laughs> tithing, yeah. tithing. My mother yeah. also went to Spelman. She's like, no matter where you go to college, my checks are always going to Spelman. So it might as well make sense for you to go to Spelman too. You can sell it right. <laughs> <laughs> and get the benefit of that. Right. Uh, okay, so KJ, um, yes, I'm here is saying that uh, you are full of positive energy. That's for sure. You are, mm. you are, you know, a thousand watt. You, you <laughs> much more than a thousand watts, uh, and it's beautiful. And um, you can get anyone hyped up. Where does that come from? 
Were you a cheerleader? Uh, is your mom the same? <laughs> My mother is confused on where it came from because she's definitely a little bit more. You know, because it reserved. overwhelms her sometimes. <laughs> she's like, I just don't understand. But, you know, she was a cheerleading coach. Uh -oh. Your mom was a cheerleading coach. Okay, no, so well, well, she'll she'll be back in a moment. She'll be back in a moment. And while we wait for KJ to come back and answer that question, Felicia, I'm going to just uh, there's one more here for you. And the music industry is predominantly male uh, dominated. How does uh, being a woman uh, work? for you or work to your advantage, especially in the way that you think and strategize? You know, advantage is a real, is a real, I don't know. That's a really hard, weird word to say. I don't know if there's an advantage more so than I understand that I can nurture. And I think that sometimes we have to take a step, a step back and understand it's okay to be a nurturer and okay to give things, give perspective, give opinions from a very different place. Um, if that makes sense. I just it feel makes like all the sense in the world. There's, there's no situation of it being easier or harder. It's actually probably always harder, especially as a black female, because I present black. So I have a certain energy when I walk in a room. It's like, I'm here. No. <laughs> but um, more than anything, it's just saying that it's okay for me to take this natural inclination to see something. You know when a person doesn't feel right. You know when a person's not giving or exuding their best. So, and often artists of color don't have the same historical access to culture, money, I can go on. So yeah. when you see that, when you see an artist walk in and you see that level of unsurety or uncertainty, I'm sorry, then mm -hmm. you say, you know what, let me step in and take the executive hat off and just be there for that person so you can walk them through something. So I think nurturing is a quality that I always bring in and I would say the word empath, I say that a lot. Um, you allow that gene to kick in and just be an empath. Um, and I think sometimes that's the best thing to do. Well, somebody, I'm gonna wait. Somebody's asking a question here. I want to run by you in case uh, okay. KJ doesn't get back. They said that they've heard that black artists say they don't get the same backing as their white counterparts. Can you speak to that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I a liar. Okay, I, I won't allow myself to get in a bad position, but I will say that there's much like they say about how we as black women exhibit pain. Um, how they don't understand the same sensitivities that we have. I think there's this idea that some artists are not human. So it's our job to humanize them and let them see the things that maybe you haven't experienced this, maybe you don't know, but you have to take yourself into that mindset of this artist and understand they have the same pain, fears, confusion Life. Yeah. that this person has. And I think that is the constant conversation. I think that every opportunity is there but it takes a team of people to bring those opportunities to the forefront and then say, hey, these are the things you guys may not be seeing. So trust my ability, my time, Instincts. my knowledge to trust me that this is how we make the situation better. Okay. Does that make sense? That's beautiful. Okay. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, well, KJ, we're happy that you I'm were back. able to, I'm back. to, yeah, to get yeah, back I'm on. Back. And, the uh, devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, you you can do uh, one or two or, you know, we can do whatever you want. But if you okay. if you remember the question and you want to finish yep. answering it, yep. that's, that's fantastic. I'd love to. So I was saying that it was very timely to be able to host your IG Live for Love from a Distance. Because in those moments when I was not feeling you know, the hypeness when I was feeling a little bit melancholy. I had to rely on on God's food, you know, and not my own, which we always um, are relying on his food. But sometimes we forget to still yeah. be able to have what I needed to give to the artists that I was interviewing. And so that, that was the food that I didn't even know I needed. So thank you guys for that. I just want to be clear that I am not, I mean, there's not a hundred percent of the day in which I am hyped, but when I come alive, <laughs> I, can't I can't be stopped, so thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, we actually uh, are running out of time. Um, so I'd love to give both of you ladies the opportunity to uh, mentor, to nurture, our audience as your way of saying goodbye. 
we'd love mm -hmm. for you to, you know, um, as succinctly as you can, leave the audience with uh, a gift of mentorship or nurturing. Hmm. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> and then Felicia um, can, yeah. can, uh, uh, can follow. Um, first, let me say that um, shame can keep you in a space longer than God intended. Um, and so I just want everyone to know that whatever gift you have, you've already been qualified to do it. And your gift is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, it was my obedience that I, I realized is connected to someone else's breakthrough. And I say the same to you. So we have to stop waiting on other people to validate us, waiting on the energy in the room. We've got to bring our own because we've already been qualified. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And mm -hmm. that's what I hope that you take away with you today. That's beautiful. And she has a book. <laughs> oh, see, that's all. And you, and you, you know what, Felicia? I just realized that in your in your debrief, <laughs> we also learned that you are uh, a PR uh, firm. You yes. have a PR firm. And if I didn't know that, certainly the way in which you yes. show up, <laughs> you know, nurturing people into yes. So tell us about your book. Very quickly, yes. just the okay. title. Yes, this book is called The Rose Effect, Eight Steps to Delivering the Performance of Your Life. It took me two moving. years. Um, yes, yes, ma'am. Eight Steps to Delivering the Performance of Your Life. It's available right now on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. And it is my testimony that if I can do it, even without having the entire vision, you can do it and take one step today, getting closer to your force. Would you do us the favor, Felicia, I mean, uh, KJ, of putting that title in the chat box so I our sure room will. can hear it and while Felicia gives us her nurturing uh, parting words? It's really hard to come after KJ. So <laughs> what I would say is just trust your gut. I think that as a Black woman, I have often, as I said, walked into rooms and said, am I okay? Is this look okay? Is my vibe okay? You know, will they accept this? And when I finally stopped saying that to myself and just showed up the way I felt was necessary, I feel like things changed. I feel like the doors opened because I trusted that however I present myself is okay for me. And so it's gonna have to be okay for you. So present yourself well, love yourself and trust your gut would be my main takeaways of this journey. So thank you. Thank you and yeah. thank you the best of luck. I will, KJ, I, I'm with you on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whatever day it is, I'm there. On the yes. island with you. And yes. Just beloved, my beloved, beloved Felicia, right? Felicia, am I saying I'm right? so happy. You know, I love you. I was like, please don't make me cry. I'm <laughs> single. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I should freeze my eggs. I have a documentary about freezing my eggs too that Shaquita Lafu did. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's called Eggs Over Easy, but I'm just telling you, yes. please don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. Okay. I won't make you cry. I'll just yes. say that I'm going to put you on my prayer list. Thank you to hold you in that space for mm -hmm. as long as you can possibly be there, as long as it serves God's purpose in your life. Because mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. when you're helping other people make it to their purpose, yep. you, you, sub, you, you know, you subvert your there purpose. There it is. Uh, Amen. Yes. She is. But I love you. <laughs> nope. I love nope. you back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No, Thank seriously. you, ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you so much for much having us. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Ah. This was fun. It was fun. Ah. Thanks. Well, this was just a fresh, a breath love of it. fresh air. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I always love to see the youngins in places, and I love to expose our audience to, you know, this love from a distance. Things, conversations. I mean, yeah. who gets to talk to an AR yeah. artist development person and the head That's of right. a, a record label and a, and a stylist, you know, so that we get to hear some of these stories that that we don't know and. It's just exciting to me. It is. It's beautiful. And, you know, um, with, with both segments, uh, with Misha, Misa, and then both with KJ and Felicia, there was this repeating um, story and this repeating advice, which is, if, in fact, God chose you, you're undeniable. Right. Right? Yeah. And that we that everyone and I certainly in my life, I have had the journey and continue to meet up with those moments where I have to claim my undeniability in the midst of 
my nervousness or in the midst of my doubt or in the midst of, but keep coming back to if God has claimed you, you are yeah, well, you got you got to have a relationship with God to even know you've been claimed. And that's where people fall down on the job. They, they know about God. They believe in God. They read about God. They got a God loves me bumper sticker, but they don't have no relationship with God. And yeah. you know, it's, a, it's the relationship. So yeah. when you have a relationship, you know, when, when you have a relationship and the person on the other side of the relationship says, go ahead and do it. You may say, you sure? Yeah, go on and do yeah. it. But if you don't have no relationship, you ain't even getting that. You ain't even getting that text. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, it, it's really. true. It's true. Yeah. And the fact that, that uh, so many people in our society don't have a relationship with whatever that higher power is, you know, whatever name they assign to that higher power, it's important to know that that can change, yeah. you know, immediately. That, the, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to share one little tip that, that I'd love to share. And then Iyama, please share one as well. Um, if you want a relationship with something greater than yourself, I, the force greater than you, and you don't know how to get there, you didn't have parents or a background that groomed you and made you vulnerable to that conversation. All you have to do is just ask for it. Literally let these words come out of your mouth. How can I have a relationship with that force that is greater than me? You ask that question, it'll open your heart up and you will find yourself traveling into spaces where that question gets answered. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing I think that is a mistake uh, that we have a tendency to hold God to our limitations as opposed to stretching into the expansiveness of God. So as humans, we think this is all I can do. So that's all that God can do. You know, and I ask people all the time, how big is your God? <laughs> how big is your God? And we need to stop defending, you know, what is and isn't godly or holy or divine. One of the things that I've realized this week is that the best thing to be right now is black. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, it, let me tell you really... something. They want to give black people something. They just want to give us. <laughs> I can tell you, I wish I wanted something. If I wanted something right now, it would be the best time for me to get it. So if yeah. you just shift into that awareness that it, all things are possible. And you ask for your guidance, your ancestors, your guardians, angels, gods, your Christ, your whatever it is for you. Um, and if it's in alignment with your purpose, doors are opening up. You know, people are calling, would you come do this? No, I ain't doing that. I'm old as hell. I'm not starting a new career. <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. No, but you know what? It's because I have a relationship with God, because I work for God Incorporated, I can That's say right. no today That's right. to That's things right. I would have given my two front teeth for yesterday. Right. Right. Because you're not using those things to identify you. Well, you're I don't need, you know what? Things. I don't need anything. What a divine possibility. I don't need anything. Now I Isn't get to that choose beautiful? what Isn't I desire. That beautiful? I don't need That's nothing. Beautiful. I do beautiful. what I want and I get to choose it. Miss Tina, it's been, fun. it's been fun as usual. Uh, okay. So to all of our loved ones who support Iyanla and I from behind the scenes, we appreciate you. We feel you. We see you. We value you. Yes. And to our beautiful audience, we thank you for taking this journey with us. We started back in March, was it? Was it I March? think it was it March really? or February? Oh yeah. And here we are. Oh. Uh, and again, we continue to discover uh, together what it means to love in everyday ways. Uh, and what an exquisite conversation we get to be in. And we thank you so much for letting us into your homes and into your hearts. Yes. Now, now um, we have something exciting to share with you about next week. Next week. All right. We are going to switch things up, which we have done before. Uh, so this is not unusual. But next week, we're going to have a special episode. And Dr. Cornell West and Professor uh, 
uh, Trisha Rose, who are launching their new podcast called The Tightrope. Did you know that? The yes. Tight, yeah, The Tightrope. And uh, they will be taking over Love from a Distance. Now, Yanla and I will be here. We're going to be here to welcome uh, the WNBA star Renee Montgomery to Love from a Distance. And then there will be this really cool takeover as Dr. West and Professor Rose, who are social justice experts, um, they will talk with Renee about her decision to sit out this WNBA season in protest of injustice in America. That, exactly, that promises to be an exciting, tantalizing, inform in informational conversation. So show up for that. We're going to be here. And um, of course, if you are enjoying this love from a distance lifestyle that we're creating here, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and make sure that you are following uh, Iyanla and I on social media. We want to keep this party going, but also expanding and becoming more of who we all can be in the world. And until next time, you know what I'm gonna say. Deep I'm gonna know. Yes, yes. Deep out. Deep, Deep out. Lots Deep of out. love. Yeah, lots of love. Thank y'all. Mm -hmm.